Hey, this is Trey from the Conversation Havers podcast, and this episode is brought to you by Revital U. They're a coffee company that helps you suppress your appetite, give you a clear, focused state of mind, and lots of energy. I've actually tried it, and I can honestly say I've noticed a difference in how I've felt. So whether you're trying to lose some weight before summer starts or you just work a lot, Revital U can really help you out. If you want to request a free sample, you can hit up ZacharyFeeney.RevitalU.com, and that's F-E-E-N-E-Y. For any other questions, you can hit up Zach at 713-898-2355 or ZacharyFeeney23 at gmail.com. All right, uh, welcome to the fourth episode of the Conversation Havers podcast. My name is Trey. And my name is Colin. And we have another guest on. Uh, We both met him in middle school, and I figured we could talk about our first time meeting him before he gets introduced. Uh, Yeah, sure. All right, so the first time I met this dude, I said he looked like Hyde from that 70s show, and then like... Because he had long, frizzy hair, yeah. like a, kind of a, I called it the Jufro. I know, even though he's not Jewish, it just kind of <laughs> reminded me of a Jufro. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, it's all the government. And he was like, yeah, it's the government, man. And then we didn't talk for like up until sophomore year. And then we became friends. Yeah. All but right. Anyway, so. Um, let's see. I don't specifically remember meeting him. It was mostly just, um, he was in, I I met him on the first day of theater in sixth grade. Um, we were in that theater class together and then we, it came to a point where, oh shit. So there were like these specific performances that we were doing and it was like a group scene or like a solo monologue, all these different things. And their performance, that the group he was in was doing a performance called uh, Tuna Texas or something like that. And they needed to um, have, they had two extra roles that they needed filled. And I was by myself because I was a lonely piece of shit back then. And um, so I walked up to them and I was like, hey, can I, uh, can I be in y'all's show? I know y'all have two extra spots. And they said no. And Damn, they hey. all played well, at two least, extra spots. At least you were an open lazy piece of, or lonely piece of shit. Like, and you were open to go talk to people. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But uh, anyways, he's been standing here silently. So <laughs> this is, that was supposed to be a drum roll. Jacob Woods. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I don't even remember that. You honestly. don't remember that? No, I don't remember most Dude, of middle school. I Dude, was I like don't remember anything. heartbroken. I'm, I feel like yeah. a, I feel like a dick. I don't even know if it was me. It was it Simon was like my... Zelke was the one that I think just <laughs> really just hated me. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know if he hated me, but he was the one I remember actively not wanting me in the group. That's crazy. Because it crazy. was um, it was you. It was. Uh, Jake Roan, Simon, Ethan Frerichs, and... You know what's so weird about that? A few other people. I, I was just hanging out with Simon like an hour ago. Really? I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, we've been hanging out pretty consistently. Y'all want to ignite this beef? Yeah, we, we should start a fight. Let's have yeah. a fight. Let's Step up, Simon. Fight. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. I, I want to see. I want to see this fight. Uh yeah, you know what else is really funny about that? You and Jake ended up being moral support for like the big main play for theater too. Y'all were y'all like moved stuff, uh, like changed the sets. Y'all were the glue that held like. Is okay, that, is that, that moral support? No. Okay, hold up. Let me tell the story of why we were moral support. Okay, yeah, you tell so, you know it better than I. What happened was this. It was eighth grade, not sixth grade. Oh yeah, no, it was later. Yeah. It was later. Um. And me and Jake had both just gotten off having, like, not the lead role, but main roles in the UIL play. Trey actually had the lead role. Yeah, and I didn't know any of my lines at all. <laughs> yeah, that, that was... We, we still somehow won first no, place. But yeah, no, what's amazing in my entire theater career is I, I got, like, five or six lead roles 
every single one of them I didn't learn my lines until three, two or three days before the show and everyone hated me and j- just because of that and like especially the big actor kids that were more into acting they hated me because I kept getting the lead roles and I was just like you just didn't care yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. Uh, it's pretty uh, funny but anyways yeah. so we had just gotten off having like main roles in this show and the UIL show, which ended like two weeks before we started, like the class show, and we we were just done. We didn't want to do any theater, and our our theater teacher, Miss Miller, or just Miller, um, she was like, "Y'all have to do something." We were like, "We're not doing anything," <laughs> and so for like the first two like two months or however long production was, we didn't do anything. We just sat there and watched rehearsals and like. Uh, played on our iPads because in eighth grade, Victory Lakes thought it was a good idea to give a bunch of eighth graders iPads and see what they do with them during class. Yeah, and, and that, uh, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, we like, subway surfers. Yeah, we played a lot of subway <laughs> surfers, <laughs> Clash of Clans. Um, you know, it's like middle school stuff. Yeah, what was that game with the whale? Whale Trail. Oh, whale, dude, whale that trail. game was. I don't think I ever played that. That game was ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun. It was yeah. like a. It was like, um, uh, what's the, it's not Flappy Bird, it's the, uh, it was it like Happy Wings? It's like the little bird yeah. that slides on the yep. slopes. It's like oh. that, but it's, you're a whale, and you're like flying through the sky and stuff. Yeah. Uh, that game was Do y'all remember the thing. unicorn one? Oh, you like, robot, unicorn robot, attack. robot Unicorn Attack. Yeah. yeah that was yeah. like an adult That movie. was another one that I'd play all the time. Yeah. Eighth grade. Anyways, so that's all we did for like the first two months. And keep in mind, we were probably... Not to like hide myself up too much, but we were probably the two best actors in that class. Oh yeah, and so we just didn't do anything. And finally, it's like a week before the show. She comes up to us, and I guess she was especially mad at us that day. <laughs> and she's like, "You have to do something." And I was like, "We're moral support," <laughs> and so that's why we got stuck with the name moral support. Jesus um, Christ, man! But then on. Like two days before the show started, they were like, "Oh my gosh, we don't know how we're gonna get props on and off." And so that's how moving crew, which was what me and Jake were, got renamed to moral support. <laughs> that's that's. Hey, incredible. well, y'all were doing a job like yeah. at that end. You Here's were the doing vibe. something. Here's the too. thing, actually. So you know, with those plays, you got to miss a whole day of class, right? Right. Okay, I finessed my way into missing two whole days of class. Because the third period, um, the third period theater group, they didn't have anybody to move stuff. So I was like, uh, hey, <laughs> I'll move stuff. And so I got another day off of not doing anything. That's incredible. Because I was just like, I'll, I'll move the stuff for y'all. And, and Miller was like, yeah, sure, Colin, go for it. Yeah. Miller was awesome. She, yeah. like, she snuck me and Trey out of school once. That's incredible. Wait, Really? Yeah, no, so during UIL, so the first day of UIL, we went, we performed. The second day was, like, the other half performing. Um, And we were like, hey, Miller, here's the thing. We don't feel like being at school right now, and we want to see the competition. (laughs) So how about you sneak, how about you take us to go see the competition? Because she was just going to go watch it herself. That's that's awesome. What a great picture, dude. I I don't remember that at all. You don't? No, she was like... Uh, yeah, sure, okay. And so she just, like, signed it off as a field trip where she was only taking two kids out of class. And we hopped in, like, her little, like, lime green Kia Soul. <laughs> and, like, that fits her so well. That and we went to Clear Falls and just watched plays for, like, an entire school day instead of going to school. You know you know what my favorite part about theater was? What? It, well, it was, honestly, it was, like, socializing and stuff and, like, just messing around and not... And basically just having an off period but my second favorite thing about theater was definitely the prop room I loved the yeah, prop oh room because it was like underneath the stage and it was a half circle so you could like run back and forth and just try on all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff and I remember for my part in the play I had I had like a like a, a you know a if you're rating it on like an alphabet letter, it'd be like a B role. It was important, but I wasn't like a main character. Yeah. Yeah. I was um I was like a consultant or something. But my character was supposed to be dressy and like uh and like real proper. And we didn't have anything that fit me at the time. So Miller gave me this 
this yellow vest, this bright banana yellow <laughs> vest. <laughs> And it was like three sizes too small, so my shirt's like hanging out the bottom of it, and it's like kind of choking me and stuff. I could barely move around, but I kind of just picked up the slack and used that to my advantage, and kind of made the I made it funnier than it should have been. And I think I got in trouble for it, or either I got like praised or in trouble for it by by the teacher. I couldn't remember, but either what way, I, I sort of messing around. I don't even remember what it was called. I really I can't remember. Was it, it the the boy in the yellow tight vest? <laughs> no, it was it was one with like the family where there was like the sleazy guy and he was like trying to weasel his way was in this to like get inheritance. Grapes or of wrath. Oh, I don't even know, dude. I, I just know, know that like this a... was in eighth grade. We were not doing grapes of wrath. Yeah. I guess you... Oh yeah, no, you're definitely. Right. Oh, was it part of like the anthology show that we did where it was like five different? like 10 minute scenes instead of like one fifty minute play we did it for halloween no no no, no. this was a this was a full-blown play i remember jake was uh jake was like the lead and he was a uh he was like the father and he was the dumb father that kept falling for the sleazy guy's tricks the entire time oh, and right. the guy was like flirting with the father's wife and the wife wasn't having it she's like oh my god like making advances on her and stuff this sounds the, so familiar right and well, the guy, it's like the same that's almost the same um, plot to the doctor in spite of himself the play that we did yeah that's true it, that was that I don't even know. I don't remember the name of it. But, but that was the UIL play, and you weren't a part of UIL, right? No, I don't yeah. think that was part of UIL. Bro, I'm pretty sure my grades were bad, too. Like, I'm pretty sure I somehow did that show. Miller just yeah. boosted your grades. Let's yeah, be not, for no reason. Theater theater teachers loved me for no reason, even though I put in, like, That's barely awesome. any work. Like, it was... I mean, I love them, too. Like, shout yeah. out uh, Mr. Stonebarger. Oh, dude. Stoney hates me now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure he hates me. We both quit theater after junior year. Well, me, you, and Jake all quit theater after junior year. And he was like, what the hell? What do I have I mean, to work with now? I had to hit up Vol Vision. I had to see what all that was about. Yeah, I'm so mad. I picked it, I picked the introductory class before Volt Vision because it said you had to do that. I did that sophomore year. That and teacher did Volt Vision, the advanced class senior year. I was like, Damn, the teacher like, let me in Volt Vision without taking the intro class, be just because I had been in a couple of Charles videos and she thought I was funny, and I was like, that's incredible. Cool. "Okay, but I was in like four of Charles's videos and got cut out of every single one of them until senior year." Damn. <laughs> Jesus. Our senior year, I finally got to be in one of his uh, Guitar King videos. Oh yeah. I just like drove a car, that was it. <laughs> yeah, Although it like, did, drove him somewhere. Yeah, there was like this action sh shot of like me turning my head into like a to it to the window. Mhm. Mm and it was to like take on me or something like that. That's awesome. That's Damn. awesome. We've we've done a couple really good video. Like I still enjoy a trash works bright even though oh. I haven't listened to it or I haven't watched it in a long time. Yeah, uh youtube.com slash user slash namuski. Look up a trash work sprite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hey, very dude, epic. Uh, what was uh Oh yeah, yeah. It was uh, there was a gaming channel. I don't remember who all was on it. Uh, dope. Nope. HD. Nope. HD. The, well, that yeah. wasn't really our thing. That was James and Dominic. That yeah, was kind yeah, of yeah. their YouTube channel. No, they kept on trying one, to say dude, that, that they were so like funny. machinima affiliates and stuff like that. They really. That's there may incredible. have been some type of like I don't really know how all that works. I'm pretty sure Machina will, like they'll work with a lot of people, but I, I, I don't just, think they, they just they like shut down. down. Yeah, basically. yeah, no, they they hit some pretty hard times. They they were like they were not uh, saying that they were doing ads, you know, because a lot of ads you have to like explicitly say that this is an ad. Apparently, yeah. they got in some trouble for not doing that, which is like, yeah. bro, you are a fucking company. Like, you should have people that, like, know this shit. Yeah, and really. Don't let this happen, but yeah. I guess... You can't let those kind of slip-ups happen. That's I guess... So much. I guess they just let it happen. Like, whatever. No. I, I still owe them for, like, so many Xbox 360 achievements. I'm not sure. <laughs> so. But no, like, going back, like, theater was... Amazing yet simultaneously awful, Trash. especially in high school. <laughs> like high school, can we talk about our scene that we did? Oh. Me, <laughs> th 
this is a uh, this is a good story right here. Me, um, do you Mark Stonebarger, critically acclaimed Mark Stonebarger, called it the worst piece of shit to ever grace the Clear Spring stage. That's incredible. <laughs> exact words. That's incredible. So, man. do you do you want to tell it? I'll tell it. Yeah. So basically, me and Trey, it was we didn't we just didn't give a shit our junior year in theater like. Or my senior year, but that wasn't yeah. theater. <laughs> so, like, we just, we hated everybody except, like, five people in that class. I, I didn't hate, I, like, some like, of them got on my nerves, but I did, I really didn't hate Like, anyone. Ellen, Kaylee, John, and, um, what was that, what was the chick that we sat next to that was, like, super, like, nihilistic and kind of goth? <sighs> That's definitely a theater person that I've heard of it. I don't remember. Alexis? Was that her name? I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. She was like, you know, she was, I don't know, whatever. But yeah, there were a few cool people in that class, but we hated everything. Um, I think so, we were just lazy. I think that was our main problem. That that was also definitely a problem. I was definitely lazy in theater. I, I slacked off so much. And that's why I ended up realizing that theater is incorrect for me. But what is Correct for me is improv theater because yeah, I don't have oh, to yes. practice it. Improv is the best. <laughs> I, love I, love I can just go crazy. And I, as a matter of fact, I had a an incredible scene once with this guy. Uh, his name was Garrett, and I will never forget this. This was my most this is my <laughs> most favorite scene of I, all time. I know what this is. So it was like it was like eight people, and you go up two at a time. So I was with Garrett. He was my partner, and we went last. So I was already like, you know, the gears in my head were already churning. I was kind of getting, you know, ready and excited for all the things I could, I could possibly do because Garrett was really creative and very enthusiastic and very funny. Uh, so the first two people go up and they start the scene. And, you know, it's going on. It's a, it's a typical, like, uh, kind of goofy scene. They're, they're trying to get things going. It's a little awkward, you know, because they're trying to create something. And then by the second or third, you know, fourth group to come on, this this whole scene's really kicking off. There's like a deep story and like character arcs and everything <laughs> that's like involved. And then we're the last group, right? Oh wait. So me and Garrett come up, and I I become a mad, I choose my character as like a mad scientist, and I turn Garrett into a giant like octopus Godzilla monster, and I put him in a pod. And people would shout out things to like uh, affect the scene, and then I would take them and then just twist it and do what I wanted to do anyways. And I kept doing that, and I gave Garrett all sorts of superpowers, like laser beams and invisibility and super strength and flight, just the dumbest stuff. And I killed all the characters that were established in like this twenty-minute period. Garrett just laser beamed them all, and then I destroyed Garrett, and the scene was over. And everybody, everybody was like, "What just happened?" I took it. I took it from like a drama with like light comedy elements to being like a crazy mad scientist that created a like a, a Japanese monster that just killed all the characters instantaneously and ended the scene. Oh, God. That's Thank good. You. I enjoy things that just destroy everything. Like that that's funny every once in yeah. a while. But, but that anyways, chaos yeah, man is so much fun. So yeah. go back to before so, we get too off, go back taking it back to uh the story. Yeah yeah. yeah. So anyways, we didn't care. We were lazy and we said all right, we, we had a scene coming up, and it was a duet. Yeah. It, that's what you call it, right? It's a duet yeah. scene, yeah. Right. Stoney had basically said, all right, everyone, like, partner up. We're going to do... Um, we're going to do duet scenes, and it's... He explicitly said, it cannot be from a movie or a TV show. Okay. We disregarded that entirely. <laughs> After about a week of um, everyone else like already having theirs picked out and rehearsed, we were like, we should probably pick something out instead of like playing on our phones in the hallway. And so we're like, what are we going to do? And for whatever reason, I think it was just because the disaster time, artist was like just starting to be made. I don't even know. It was before it was like that. Just no, announced. it was before It was that. announced at the time. There was probably some type of announcement, but I yeah. just had an infatuation with The Room. Yeah. The movie, The Room. Dude, that's an incredible movie. Dude, though. I so know. And, yeah. We picked the roof scene from The Room. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, and 
I played Tommy and um, <laughs> or Johnny and uh, yeah. Colin played I was Mark. Mark. I was Mark. And so we had to do the classic bust through the door and. Uh, <laughs> What is it again? What does he say? He says, I uh, did not, not hit her. her. I did not hit her. I did I not. Did it's not true. I did it's not bullshit. I did not hit her. I did, I did not. not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. But the, okay, here's the thing. Whenever we started doing the scene, I could not hold my laughter. <laughs> okay. And we didn't even really get that far into Here's it. the thing. I was trying to make it passable. Okay. You know, like... We could perform it, and Stoney wasn't going to castrate us, right? So, like, I was trying to say, like, okay, we can, like, all play it off to, like, different things or whatever and just get by and not have to do much work at all, right? Yeah. That instantly went down the fucking drain <laughs> when Trey, <laughs> Trey busts through the door and just instantly starts cracking up laughing while doing his lines. Like... It's not even like he might have said one word before he starts laughing and he's just trying to like suffer through yeah. these lines. Yeah, That's and uh, I don't know how, I don't even remember how far we made to, in. We to finished the scene. it, unfortunately. We finished it. We finished, we finished it. the scene. It's only like a two minute scene. It was way That's under time limit, too. That's awesome. Damn, I don't remember that at yeah. all. Yeah. There's, you know, I don't think teachers. Sometimes I think teachers take things too seriously, and I wish they were more laid I mean, back. Okay, that I was us like slacking off, right? I get the that. The way he reacted, he literally like I was kind of scared. He, oh, he, I was terrified. Dude, Stoney's kind of swole. Like, yeah, no, no, yeah, he's a little stocky. He's he little would stocky just like bald, dude. Well, he, he would out. sit in he would sit in his chair and just eat fucking peanut butter all day, <laughs> and then work out after school. But That's yeah, he was he. I don't. I mean, I'm not even gonna pretend to remember like exactly what he said. I remember but, what he said. But he did say this was the worst piece of shit that's ever like been on the stage, and I was just like, we were both just kind of like, Jesus Christ. no. And, and all the other theater kids that were more into it than us were obviously like, oh, oh my god, yes, just it so was a mixture of that, on. and then there were like a few of them that were like legitimately horrified. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Like, good. They, because at first they were like, <laughs> shake it up. Baby. At first yeah. he was like, chaos. Everything was really quiet, and Stoney was like, "Do any of you? Do any of the students have critiques?" And there was like one or two just like weird like critiques. Like they still didn't really know what was happening. <laughs> and then, like it gets to him, and he's like, "That was the worst fucking piece of garbage that has ever." Had the dishonor of being on that stage, and we and, like, we, and we were just kind of like, we know. were hiding our faces with our notes. But I was God. still laughing a little bit. Like, oh, we, oh, you cannot, oh, dude, 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 dude. That's, that's we okay. Bad. So he sent us outside. Yeah, he's like, get the fuck off my stage. Yeah, he was like, get that's the fuck out of here. He was like, get the fuck out of here. And so we were sitting out in the hallway, and he said something. That um almost made me crack up, and I know that would have made him more pissed. I I'm trying to think of what he I said. I remember what he said. He goes, he goes, okay, you guys should pick a new play, a new scene to do, and then you can perform it then. I think that would be wise of you. And then in my brain, I like whenever he said that would be wise, I thought that would be wise though. And I almost, <laughs> I almost, <laughs> I almost like started. Cr- I was like holding back my laughter, <laughs> like trying. To- I had oh a, my God. I had a theater scene that went downhill so fast; it was incredible. So it, it was, uh, it was kind of like an improv thing. It was the beginning of the year for theater, right? And Stony was our teacher because I, I didn't have Stony all the years in my theater because I took some of the lower theater classes as well. But the year I did have Stony, uh, I jumped up on stage with this guy, and he was like, "Hey, we were supposed to create characters, right?" He's like, "Hey, my name's Derek," and I was like, "Yeah," and I'm, I, I don't remember my name. I was like, "Hey," and I'm Jack, and. This is uh, this is us putting piranhas on our dicks. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was like, this is us piranhas bite. Uh, this is us with piranhas biting our dicks. It was supposed to be like a jackass spoof, and I then was... instantaneously I got kicked out of the room. Yeah, and I had to go sit in the hallway in a chair. And then some girl walked by me, and she she just sat down on the wall. She was ignoring her class or whatever, like not going to class. And she was just talking with me the entire time, and she was trying to figure out why. 
I got kicked out, but it was because I ended our scene in like seven and a half seconds by saying piranhas on our dicks and you can't say that. It was wild that's crazy. Uh, I would have never... Oh, but then after me and Colin did that scene, we ended up doing Of Mice and Men. Yeah. And the scene where... Oh, uh, yeah. That, we actually fucking Yeah, no, that. no. We, we, we actually came back <laughs> and like did really good. But. Y'all no, should have got like extra after, points. Y'all performed no, twice. Both incredible. After we <laughs> performed that scene, like most of them were like, we don't have a critique. That was like legitimately amazing. Impeccable. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you know what was it? Really you know what really was it impeccable that I did? So at the end of the year, I had to get my second credit for sign language, right? And I'm a huge slacker and procrastinator. So I took sign language because I thought it'd be easy. It wasn't <sighs> that know. easy. It was yeah, pretty difficult even was... still, even though it's supposed to be the easiest one, right? So at the end of the year, I'm like barely passing and we have a major grade that we had to take care of. It was a, it was basically, it was taking place uh, for like multiple tests. So it was pretty serious. And the premise of it was you had to uh, sign an entire song. Oh, and we had months to do this. This is when me and you like became friends. <laughs> yeah, in that yeah, class. yeah. Yeah. We knew each other beforehand, but this is when we really started becoming friends. Um, and you start turning me on to all sorts of music and stuff too. But so we had we had like six months to prepare and learn this song, and I procrastinated for six months. I didn't learn any Damn, of it. We had six months. We had so long six to months? do that. Yeah, that was, sounds way too long. It was like four months, six months, three months. It was something like that. It was a long, extended period of time. We had Damn. that way in advance. I remember we got it in like January or something, something like that. But I picked, and you can you can YouTube it. I picked up um, for my song "Graduation" <laughs> by Vitamin C, which is the cheesiest, like, like uh, mid nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, you got a, you actually filmed it. You got a video of it. I need to get that video from you because that's like incredible. But I started. Um, it's like a five and a half minute song. <laughs> I didn't memorize any of it. I needed to pass this class. And the only way I was going to pass this class is if I managed to get a good score on this major grade, right? <laughs> and I go up there, and I had none of it memorized. And I did, like, three signs, and I started it, laughing it, and <laughs> acting as no. dumb as it, possible. It then. started, the song started, and it starts with, like, Well, I think about tomorrow, and I think about now. So I bet. <laughs> and it got about that far, and he was still standing still without yeah. doing anything. And I was like... I was just sitting there with my phone recording, <laughs> and then he like, he just slowly was like, think, me, <laughs> yeah. like 10 seconds after it started. I only, knew, I only knew a couple signs, and I started laughing, and everybody else was like laughing, either at me or with me, I didn't care, it was funny either way. I don't know how I made it through high school. I don't either, I, honestly, like, Senior I year? shouldn't have, I should have failed, like actually I know I should have failed, for a matter of fact. Shout out to Miss Baker, I know a lot of people hate her. But she actually passed me. Like, I shouldn't have graduated high school, but she passed me. But, yeah, I got a, to make a long story short, I got a one on that project. Like, out of 100, I got a one. <laughs> <laughs> that was my grade. Oh my and I still God. passed somehow. I don't know how, but I got my, I got my credit for That's what I'm saying. Year it's like of sign language. It seems like everyone, like, because I still follow people on social media that, I have, that are still in high school. Like, right. And it's like, I see them stressing, and it's like, damn, like, but in retrospect, it seems like it's like, dude, I didn't do anything and I made it through. Like, there was so, like yeah. senior year, I said to myself, it was just kind of like a fact that I knew. I was like, I'm not gonna try. Like, <laughs> yeah, this no. isn't. This is just not. I'm not gonna put a lot of effort in. I just knew I wasn't, and yeah. I somehow skirted through. Now, senior year is that year, man. That's what you do. Honestly, like, I mean, you can you can work really hard and like get a scholarship and go to a college, but like, but like that's for nerds. Yeah, like get out of here, you, <laughs> you fucking science bitches. <laughs> but no, I I had already messed that up like years in the making. I was not getting no fancy scholarship to like go to college. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Senior year, I'm gonna go to a party and you know party after party <laughs> after party, and I'm gonna pass with like you know C's. 
and uh, just enjoy my time and make some make some good friends, make some quality make some quality memories. Like math, that's what I'm all about. So. Math was my only real enemy because some I could just keep up all the other grades. Like I usually had a A or B in every other class. Yeah. But math was the only one that I was failing like the whole year. I had the nicest. And math then I passed teacher. with a C. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. I had the nicest math teacher, but I did not take her class seriously at all. I remember which that was when which teacher uh, Miss Moffat. Oh, oh, I lady. loved Miss Moffat. She was so I don't cool, really, dude. So she cool. was. I don't think the, I ever met her. She, she was, was so nice. She was literally one of the best teachers too. But I don't give a shit about <laughs> school, and I definitely didn't give a shit about pre-calculus. Like, come on, man. That's like you never. That's like oil and water. I'm not doing pre-calculus. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not. What, now you know what I was doing. I was watching uh, Fallout YouTube videos, like on my phone in the back of class, or like hey, whispering to people. I had a 43. And pre-calculus, and then I just quit the class like halfway through the year, <laughs> and then I just changed over and picked another class because I had I had just enough room where I'd like passed enough classes, but slacked off just enough to where I could fail one class and still make it through high school and graduate. So I did. I just dropped pre-calculus. I was like, "Fuck this class! I ain't, I ain't doing this. This is terrible." Yeah, because I think you only needed like three math credits technically. Yeah, yeah. Because there's like a minimum plan. That's what I graduated on. That's yeah, what I graduated on. Same. I, I could have graduated on like the, the regular plan with everybody else but I was like you know what fuck it like, man as long care. as I get that damn diploma yeah I'm, I'm like I don't give a fuck there ain't nobody gonna go back and look at you my high school minimum plan oh, you had a 77 in this class and uh, this other person applying for the job had a 79 so we're going with them like that's not yeah. how that works at all no it's one like cares. your English 1 class is just gonna like screw you out of your goals <laughs> in life yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> no yeah, I seriously. No, I think about like, do y'all think how much do you think you learned in high school that you can like actually like pull up right now and be like, yeah, I know I learned this. I will say that like, there I'm, there are definitely some things, but it's like I don't know. When it comes to classes, there are two specific classes that I feel like actually helped me, or actually have I've actually retained knowledge from mm -hmm. that I use, whether it be like in my life or in conversation. And that's um, Human Geography, which was an AP class that I took my freshman yeah. year. Interesting. You said and AP. Then, I was like, that's why I don't know what that yeah. is. <laughs> and then Economics. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Because you know, I hear all economics these people on Twitter like complaining. They're like, why don't they teach us about taxes? And it's like, they fucking do in economics. Like, yeah, economics. There was an entire really class cool. about. Isn't that a required class? Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a half year class, and that was honestly one of my favorite classes because because you're using the things you learn about right, and it it honestly like it was right up my alley anyways because I liked English and I liked uh, the idea of making money so and that's economics yeah you know what I mean like you got to be able to speak the language of economics and also I like. I like you know stories and whatnot, and you and economics is about money, so it was like kind of right up my alley. But economics was a fun class, man. Who's I your teacher? Um, uh, was it Hornet? Oh Hornick. yeah, Hornick. Coach Hornick. Hornick, Coach Hornick. Yeah, no, he liked me. I liked him too. He was cool. I had the bald one. Yeah, no, I ended up with the bald guy the uh, second semester. I think it was you go back and forth like uh, you had Coach one Yeah, yeah that group. that was government. Yeah, Dude, yeah, it was government. That was I government. don't remember ninety percent of my teachers' names. People are like, "Oh yeah, Mrs. Inglehire," and I'm like, oh, <laughs> "Not yeah. that I'm gonna do it right now, but I can. I literally remember every teacher I've ever had. Like going back to when I lived in that's, Amsterdam. That's why I don't know how you do that. Yeah, like, it's I, like I literally, remember. and it happened every year. Like I would know my teachers, and then I moved on to the next grade, and I just forgot all of them, except the like cool ones that I really liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have like five or six. That I remember that I was like, yeah, them. You know, yeah. funny enough, I think school is really, really valuable. More for like social building. Yeah, it's not valuable for academics at all. I think if it, it teaches I mean, it you, can be, but I think it, it teaches you like social skills and how stuff, to like if you really capitalize on that. how to live in a society, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's like a mini society. You know yeah. what I mean? You're always even like during passing periods, and you're going in between classes or eating at lunch or. You know, just hanging out with people. You're literally always in a class at school. It's the social class. Like you got to yeah. learn how to interact yeah. with people. And if there's one thing that is more important than anything, it's, it's yeah. knowing how to interact with people because people are yeah. literally. Well, yeah, people, and so. 
you look at some some homeschool kids, and I'm not saying all homeschool kids. A lot of a lot of homeschool kids are, are like, like normal. great off, like even better than normal sometimes. Right. But you look, there are some homeschool kids that just play right into it. Yeah. Um, they're because they were homeschooled, and then they were naturally never social. Yeah. And then. Just 18 years later, you look at them and you say, oh, are they autistic? No, they were just homeschooled. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. that's oh. something I've literally heard before. I said, oh, yeah, like, I've heard that. Yeah. The fact that... On the parents' part, it has to... There's an aspect of, like, you got to be aware. Like, if you're homeschooling them and not, like, they don't have friends and they just, like... You have to they, at least recognize that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like they need... To talk to someone their age and like hang out with them, like that just needs you, to happen. You can't live your life in that little home bubble because once you go out into the real world, it's just gonna shit all over you, and right. you're yeah. not gonna be used to it. It's chaos. It's chaos. And school is chaos. It's dumb. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not. Yeah. It's not formulated well half at the, all. Half the shit I paid attention to was not school related. Like it was. Yeah. It was stuff that happened in school, but none of it was ever school related. I mean, like. It had to do with things we did in school, but, like, none of the subjects. Right. You know what I mean? I remember... It, it's hard to explain. I remember that one dude dropping acid outside of the tennis courts. Oh, dude, I watched it. Better than I remember. First of all, he tried to swim away from the cops. On the ground. Yeah, in on, concrete. The, on the concrete. That was incredible. But I, remember I remember that better than I remember any class I've ever been in. I yeah. watched him put the tabs on his tongue. Really? And, yeah, I was I was just watching him, and I was like, what? Because... That's hilarious. I don't know. At that, that time... That is a terrible idea. Don't... That's not something that you should... Yeah, at school, do. like... Yeah. I don't... I but some kids, sense. they're always... I kind of... Like, those kids... They they give you their entertainment yeah. pretty much. It's, <laughs> it's, like, really it's like if you want to do that, I'm just gonna watch. Yeah, and I'm gonna like eat the popcorn, and, and it's gonna that. be funny. Yeah. Yeah. And then like his first day back from like AEP or like whatever, <laughs> on his first day back, he just got the ever living shit beat out of him. What the hell? Yeah, really? By who? I don't know. I forgot. That's I just movie. remember it was during lunch again, and he just got the shit beat out of him. Dude, I loved Damn, all, son. I loved all the crazy stuff out here. Cause like my junior, uh, my junior year and senior year, I completely switched years. It was all about like going to parties, having fun, finding crazy things, you know, trying new stuff, um, you know, trying to find girls, hanging out with the little the little group of guys I was I was a part of. Right, so we're. We're always having fun and whatnot. That's what it was always about, and there was always crazy stuff going on. Like uh, y'all know, y'all know the abandoned, burned down radio station not too far from here. It's like uh, over in Friendswood. Know, sounds kind of familiar. Well, there's a there's an abandoned, burned down radio station, oh, and right. they they held a fight club there <laughs> in high school. I'm oh, not even kidding you. Wait, I've heard about I've heard about I don't, this. I don't know many of the details, so like this ain't gonna be any extended story. But there was some big ass buff kid that was apparently beating everybody's ass so they held a fight club and they made a bunch of money off of it in like the middle of the night they were fighting at this abandoned burned down radio station it was i heard about that i saw some pictures and that was that was wild but i just think it's funny because like you know you got like you're talking about homeschool kids like they they have no idea about any of that you know what i mean they have no idea about the, the party and the you know trying to figure out how to talk to girls and make friends at the same time and then go into fight clubs <laughs> yeah <laughs> like homeschool and I'm sorry that's not I just even can't just homeschool kids. here's the I feel thing like most kids don't <laughs> right yeah. don't fight so clubs. one of my I did one of my friends that I did uh, discipleship my discipleship program last year was homeschool and um, basically. He just had never been introduced to any of that stuff. And not that, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, go out and, like, go crazy. But, like, you need to be aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because, like, you need to be exposed it's, to it. It's just better. Because too. it's, yeah. Yeah, it loosens you up a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. And so we okay, were at we were at a Whataburger just kind of chilling out. We were, like, uh, talking to these, just this table full of guys. We were talking to them about Jesus. And, um, just in the middle of the conversation, they whipped out a blunt and they were like, <laughs> Hey, y'all want some? And this kid's never seen a blunt before. Oh, this well, kid's well, never seen a weird blunt. cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, he, that's what I, I want to say. He actually asked something along those lines at first. Wow. I would have just said, but, yeah, I would have been like, yeah, it's a cigarette. Don't worry. 
Because like someone like that, if they're really not accustomed to stuff, yeah. like just be like, yeah, yeah. I don't, these were just random guys we met at Whataburger. That's but awesome. after that happened, he would he like shut down for like two days. Wow. Really? Yeah. Like he didn't Ooh, hang out, wow. talk to anybody, anything like that. It was what? like he was just very quiet, more reserved than usual, because he's usually like a goofy, active, fun guy to be around. Did he Damn. smoke? Is that why? No, no, he didn't smoke. It was just being around it. It was general. just, it was just, I don't think he had ever, like, seen drugs or, like, met anybody mm-hmm. that had done drugs before. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, honestly, those are my favorite type of people, though, because whenever I meet those kind of people, instantly my brain just, like, it, it flips a switch and I just start like pulling a Mad Max and like spray paint and silver paint in my mouth, and I'm like, you know, we live, we die, we live again. And then I just want to like take them to a strip club and like have a have a like a, a hangover type night with them, just to completely destroy their world, just to like throw in a big old dash of chaos into their mind and just make them go, whoa. Well, That's in my this case, case thing ever. just yeah, a month, a month of just like, <laughs> just yeah, like I, wide-eyed, <laughs> just freaking out. Yeah, oh like straight jacket in a rubber room. Yeah, but it's uh, to be fair too. Like, I think it's it's the ideas that are instilled. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. like yeah. when I was a kid. I thought we made you see the devil. Like yeah. that's what I legit thought. You know. Yeah. So if you're not around it or anything like that, it's it's like it's always just better to accustom people to things. Like right. even if they're never gonna take part in it, it's like why why learn about anything? Like that goes for anything really. Yeah. yeah. You know. Not just illicit activities or whatever. Yeah. Like I don't do any of those things, but I know about them. They're not gonna shake me if yeah. like. I encounter somebody that's doing them or if I'm in one of those situations, you know? Yeah, I mean, generally, like, and I think that this is becoming more and more true over time. That's becoming more common anyways. You know what I mean? So it's like, the important part isn't to like, uh, you know, go out and like, I'm going to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff, but just being comfortable around people who have different kinds of lifestyles you know what I mean I guess you could say like to a certain extent yeah like, obviously. Obviously. obviously yeah you don't you want to be I, someone I don't be like oh hey you want to chill if, so if someone's about to hit this crack pipe yeah. but yeah like let's if chill if someone's torching rocks mm-hmm. you might want to leave yeah definitely <clears throat> yeah get out of there but you know what I mean like it's important to have a little bit of exposure to that you ain't gotta you can live your own life you do what you want to do but like well, you know, just under, I guess, understand. I feel like everyone has those experiences growing up where it's like you experience something where your brain just kind of makes that like, eh, like this yeah. is not right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember first time, like I walked downstairs and my brothers were watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre oh. and it was right at a part where like a dude was on a hook or it was one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. I don't remember which one. Yeah. Definitely wasn't the first one. I don't think, but He's just like cutting up this dude with a chainsaw and it was like, you know, for a kid, that's just a lot for your brain to process. You're like, whoa. Yeah. And it's like those type of moments growing up are always like they're interesting. The feeling, the feeling you get, it's like like I said, it's just that noise. It's like, Argh. yeah, like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because I had I had so much exposure to so many things. The internet, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But no, even before that, like I had so much exposure to so many things at such a young age. I genu- I genuinely do believe like it's what made me like uh, I don't want to say like care just carefree, but like. Uh, Chaotically carefree, like as a person, just like self reflection. Chaotic neutral. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, I guess. But like, uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that kind of stuff when I was in like first, second grade. Uh, I found out about like all all the little like childhood lies that you find out about. You know, real early on, like earlier before most kids by years. Santa, like, and all that. right? Like Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, you know that kind of thing. And hey, bro, uh, what you talk about? Santa's real. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> do, do we need to talk? Nah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, like I was blowing zombies' heads off and stuff in like the yeah. third grade. As a matter of fact, I remember when I was in like the second grade because I was a goofy ass. Um, I was playing a game where it was like a zombie game where you could uh, take like a sickle 
that they like cut uh, weeds and like flowers and stuff with, mm-hmm. like in a garden. Uh, uh, you can take yeah. it and you can hook it around a zombie's neck and then push on his chest and pull his head right off. Dead right? rising. Dead rising. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I would. I was in class and or we were like walking out of class for whatever reason. It was like second grade and I was like imitating the action, like explaining it. And I had like a friend of mine who's like, oh, you know, cool, cool. And I like genuinely scared a little girl. Like it was funny. I was in the second grade or fourth grade or something like that. But I didn't realize that that wasn't exposed to them yet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I also, I, I remember something else that was really funny I, too. I honestly think that's better. Like a lot of people are like, uh, I, de- okay. I definitely think whenever I have kids and stuff, I don't want them to be exposed to like Grand Theft Auto or anything like that right. for a little bit. But it is also good because like when you're a kid, you you don't have any type of evil intent. So it's right. like if you show them that and it's like you, you put it in a way where it's like this is not real. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, this is... It's like there's it's a clear, there's a clear distinction between reality and not reality, right. you know. Right. And it's like I feel like that's a better way to teach kids than just to like not show them anything, don't let them know anything bad. It's like well, right. also I mean, one of the biggest things like I'm gonna use the example of like Catholic school. Most atheists I know, not all, a lot of atheists I know, started off in Catholic school, mm-hmm. and it's because their parents basically just forced this thing on them. Yeah, and Catholicism, yeah, Catholicism especially. Especially, like, rougher Catholicism, stricter. Mm-hmm. It, fire you and know, Yeah, like, exposing them to that and nothing but that and then saying, everything outside of this is bad. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. You're never going to get any exposure. You're never going to talk to anybody that does that. You're never even going to learn about what I'm talking about. You right, know? Like, right. Most... Like, that's not the way to do it because then all you do is build up resentment within, yeah. the, within the kid. And also, now they don't know how to handle situations. You yep. know what I mean? Like, kind of screw them. That is, you do screw them. You screw them over. And that is, to me, the worst thing you can do as a parent. Your, your job is to uh, mold a good person and prepare them for their future and for the world ahead of them. You know what I mean? And if you can't provide them with a good perspective on the world around them as bad as it can be sometimes they, it has to be an honest perspective because yeah. otherwise they're gonna you know stumble upon someone you know what would you say like, smoking like, crack torching rocks right torching <laughs> rocks yeah that's what and I was then they're gonna for. go hey, hey what this is that? looks fun and I'm like, gonna oh, torch some rocks it makes you feel so yeah. good dude my mom like, told me not to rocks. do this so I'm gonna try it now yeah exactly or I don't even know what torching rocks is so yeah. let's do it this couldn't have any irreparable damage on my brain, you know? Yeah. So, uh, some people just shouldn't have nah. it. <laughs> a little crack here and there. Mm. Can't hurt. That's just my philosophy. Toughen Don't you up me. a little bit, you know? <laughs> really, get them, really get that blood pumping through your lungs. See, see yeah. the, we're talking about parenting... That, that's how you be a good parent. You yeah. expose them to it. Yeah. You I say, don't think... I, I'm not <laughs> sure that means literally... <laughs> You just throw your child rocks. in the drug room. You just like <laughs> got like a whole like sack of like cocaine. You're not leaving until you're knee deep, buddy. One of each. <laughs> one of each. No. You're not leaving until you can see your own eyeballs. <laughs> Goodness, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, crack, crack rock. Yeah. Crack rock, crack rock. That's like one of my favorite Frank Ocean songs. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have some other subjects. We've been talking about school for a while. Yeah, if y'all yeah. just want to hard cut into something else, yeah, let's let's jump into something else. Okay, so what would y'all like to talk about? We can pick we can pick from any of these. I'm I'm down. I'm kind of thinking. There's not really much planned. Social media. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. We just wrote down a couple bullet points and kind of. Yeah, we, we, we wing it here. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. No You've been doing most of the like actual yeah. planning like yeah. I just come up like for both of our lists he already had a list with multiple bullet points for every single one and I came in and like pretty much on the spot had to like think of everything I just I'm just here man I just showed yeah. up you know? no um, I can tell I, I can talk about the uh, since we're already talking about crack rocks I can talk about the crazy crackhead I worked with once oh hell yeah, yeah let's do no, that let's okay. Do that. okay so I worked with this guy 
And uh, honestly, I don't even want to give out his name in hey, case like, he hunts me down or some shit. But um, I worked with this crazy guy who was like uh, real ominous. Like he always wore his work hat down a little bit farther than everyone else so you could barely see his eyes if he was looking at you at the right angle. And he was talking to me once and I didn't real I didn't know if this guy was crazy or if I was making like quick judgments. So I was keeping an open mind. I I worked with him. I was like, you know, I'm I'm yeah, yeah, cool yeah. with it, you know, whatever. And so he begins to tell me about um about some real eye opening stuff that I didn't really uh, I didn't really know about. But as it turns out, yeah, aliens uh, actually created humans to harvest gold so that they could take the gold from us and uh, turn it into an alloy that they could eat so they could live forever. I didn't even know about this, but apparently that's real factual. But that's what that's what he had uh, that's what he had gotten in on. Um, and he had he had dived so deep down that rabbit hole I couldn't get him to stop talking about that for like three hours. Where did you work? Oh my god. Oh it was it was at a fast food place. So yeah, yeah it was it was so that makes it even better. He was like a he was like a forty year old man and uh, we we're working at a fast food and he's yeah, probably was, a hit with the ladies. Oh, dude, he's such a and believe it or not, like I'm not even kidding you, he'd take like the, the rag towel buckets that are filled with like towels and stuff and he'd start curling them like they're dumbbells. And some of the some of the older women like were flirting with him and stuff. There was another crackhead lady that was actually she had a big crush on him, and it was funny because anytime she'd flirt with him, he'd look at me and go like, "Yeah, no." It was it was so funny. He had like a high sense of pride, but he also he had said, like a low sense of sanity. That he was. Like, he crazy. said, "All women are low key aliens, so I can't fuck with them." <laughs> no, that's but, why they like jewelry. They want the gold. <laughs> that's why they want, that's why they want the gold. But uh. Uh, yeah, I have that, a, that's a whole conspiracy that goes super, super deep. Though. I have a, a like a couple people that I've known because all I've worked was restaurant jobs. Right. Yeah. First job I ever had, my boss used to go into the back room and they like, crush up pills and snort it, and oh he, like God. he like showed me his nostrils one time, and they were like completely cut up, just very, very Swiss bad. cheese. Not really, just oh. more like sliced up, and, oh. and I was like. He was always just amped up, just like, hey, what's, what's, what's going on? And uh, he used to, I would be like cleaning a table and he would just be like, hey, Dick Cromarty, what are you doing? And I'm just like cleaning this table and he's like, oh, okay, good. And then just like, would like walk Rick away. Sounds like Rick Sanchez. Uh, damn, that was actually kind of <laughs> Rick, Rick Sanchez. Rick from yeah. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, nah, and then... Uh, the worst one I had where I kind of thought I was going to get murdered was... Uh, Pizza Hut because my boss Chase I used to tell you about him and I've told like a lot of people but that dude I was I was legit kind of afraid of him oh yeah like the sociopath like crazy dude I mean sociopaths can hide it like he he was he was like a like either there were two options either he was on drugs all the time like taking speed or something or he was some type of psychopath or something like dude was not right those are my favorite kind of people they're always they're not my favorite kind of people they make me (laughs) very uncomfortable Uh, i I understand that but just they're interesting i had to stay one night up until like one o'clock and he made me go into the freezer and he stood over me while i scrubbed the floor oh jesus oh my god yeah i was like i'm in a freezer right now like this is If I'm gonna die in this Pizza Hut, this is how this is this is how it happens right here. I, you know, one of my favorite shows whenever I was growing up was A Thousand Ways to Die on like Spike. That show was always just too goofy for me. I I love that show. Some of that shit has to be fake. Yeah, some of that shit has to be. Well, okay, what they do is. They're all based off of real. They're exaggerated. Uh, They're all based off of real deaths. So like, I mean, just specifically like. There was the one about the guy who like got his asshole sucked into his pool pump or whatever. That's that's like an urban <laughs> myth. I heard that even before the show. Jesus. Yeah. So that's like actually happened, but like the stories around it are all I mean, you could exaggerate it to make it sound worse. That's kind of cool though. You it, can just make a story out of that. It's it's yeah. exaggerated to make you not feel bad for the person that died. Yeah, they're always like s- either just stupid as hell or just like Assholes. terrible, terrible people. <laughs> well, here's the thing: in the first season, if you go back and watch the first season, it's like real footage. 
Oh, oh like, yeah, no, I've heard that. It's terrifying. Like yeah, I saw one of good. this guy just like getting his legs chopped off because an eighteen wheeler runs over them, Jesus. and they like blur the main part out, but you see it. Yeah, yeah. and it's not like this thing that they illustrate to make it seem like like that and guy that was, was an on, asshole they were like no he's just like some poor homeless guy like that was on was, tv geez. that was on tv that's awesome damn they're like we blurred it out but you can still see his face like, <laughs> like he's like ah, god help me agony. you're just like well i mean it's blurred don't it's worry about bad. it to be honest i don't really like i haven't i don't really like most of my comedy comes from twitter and like that's pretty much it. Like, Twitter is my main... Uh, and Instagram. Instagram has a lot of funny meme pages. But it's yeah. like, it's not really like that anymore. I think there was a little edgelord phase in memeism yeah. that was yeah. just, eh, like, look at all this crazy <laughs> shit. And there, there is still stuff like that out there. But it's like, now, it's, it's like different shit. Like, yeah. it's all irony now. Oh, yeah. dude, the levels of irony it's that, incredible. like, current memes are at... We yeah. have gone full circle back to top text, bottom text memes. Yeah. Like, we're just Doge. making those again. Yeah. Doge is a meme again. Oh, yeah. yeah like, Doge. <laughs> you know, I, I, got a, I got a Doge shirt uh, oh my in, God. like, 2012. Oh. I was, like, in middle school. <laughs> I was like, I want this shirt. Dabbing through the snow. Dabbing <laughs> through the snow. <laughs> We yeah. went to Goodwill and got him a shirt where it's Santa dabbing. It was like it was like a, a like a a youth's fourteen year old girl's shirt with like Santa with glittery snow and it just says dabbing through the snow and it's like you can almost see my belly button whenever I put it on <laughs> and it like almost comes up to my elbows and that's like I wear that shirt for Halloween. Like that's funny. Damn. So uh, yeah, me and Colin talked about I want to be Doug Dimmodome. I want to make a hat that's really big and be Doug Dimmodome for a Halloween. <laughs> See, like, still gotta figure out how to make a cowboy hat that big. Yeah, you could, you could honestly probably um, commission uh, it from somebody. How much money is that gonna be? Shit, let's go. Is there some type of? I'm gonna look up tallest cowboy hat. Like, yeah. can we look? Can we look up tallest cowboy tallest hat? Tallest cowboy hat. You could probably do uh, paper paper mache. Paper mache. That's what I was trying to think of. So you could probably paper mache one, honestly. So that'd be pretty simple. But yeah, I just I feel like that'd be pretty funny. Yeah. Like not be able to walk into rooms <laughs> because my cowboy hat's too big. <laughs> I love how cool so they took so fun, they took big in the wrong way. I'm looking for top, tall, long as hell, tall. stretching into. Yeah. The, so like the first one is just like one of those. Big blue, like over, like inflated, almost cowboy hats. Yeah, I love costumes. I love costumes. Yeah, I always so loved Halloween. Yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna. If I ever have like ten million dollars or something, I'm just gonna go to Party City and buy everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, have, like, this this cowboy hat is five thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's stupid. Stetsons. Oh, I'm gonna buy. A Do you think your dad has one of those? Probably. <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeet. Yeah. Wouldn't shock me. Maybe not five thousand dollars, but l- look at it. It's a cowboy hat. It's basic as hell, too. Like yeah. that's wild. I love expensive clothes, and not because like I buy expensive clothes, because I never do. I do the opposite. <laughs> but like I love looking at expensive clothes because it's just so intriguing. It's like this pendant is eighteen thousand yeah. dollars. So it's like, what is it? A five. It's a, it's a pendant. Yeah, and like, it's like, what? What is it about, like, Kanye's fashion yeah. sense that will make a regular shirt with holes in it sell for, like, hundreds? You yeah. have to, you have to like it. Like, you have to like it and be involved with the, with the scene that much. And it's like, I mean, it, it's art that you wear. Yeah. You're no, going for a specific, like, look and style is what it is it, so. and and I figure if you have enough money and it's like and you see something that you really like it's like I don't know I ain't I'm not shitting on it either like if if I had a lot of money and I saw clothes that I really liked but they were ten thousand dollars yeah yeah I'd buy it like whatever you know what I mean it doesn't matter that's what money, money is for but you know yeah I mean? but there are also some there, 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 there are some ridiculous, ridiculous things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was hinting at you know, at first. Like, if you look at some of the art shows where it's like, uh, the, like the fashion mm. art, like runways and stuff. I've seen like two or three of them, and people have like 
like giant eyeballs on top of their heads and shit. Like well, that's it's wild. that's it's not. I don't think that that's not meant to be worn on a street level. No, it's not. It's not. That's why they got like it's street art. Wear. It's art. Like yeah, it's, it's literally art. just art. Yeah. And um, I mean, the way I think about it is, it's like I try to keep an open mind, and it's like it took me a little bit to. Uh, to understand why anyone would ever buy or wear that, but it's like it's important, know. honestly. It's yeah, important because no, it pushes it, boundaries for what people it, like definitely you know, think. Yeah, so I think I think it honestly adds a lot of like uh, interesting. It adds like a lot of interesting spice to the mix of just clothes of what you could wear of like how you could express yourself. I'd like to think, or I'd like to see what people like from the red coat like. Old school, oh uh, yeah, like revolution. Yeah, revolution. Like, what? What would they think about what we wear today? Yeah, that, like that'd be on a daily, just street level, because well, they were wearing like twelve layers. With, I mean, not yeah. really, but just like you know, all these fancy with buttons and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And it seemed like they went through so much to get dressed every single day. Yeah, yeah like, like you have, you had to like dress up just to go out. Now it's like. I'll go to Walmart in my pajamas sometimes, and it's, it's good. You know, yeah, it works. One well. time, I showed up to Witch Witch when Jake Heckendorn was working there. Yeah. And I had a Texans jersey, um, zebra striped pajama pants, and cowboy boots on. Hey, it's lit. <laughs> Dude, I I, that. I'm, I'm love wearing mixed open, match. Like, I'm open to everything now. Like I just like yeah, yeah, whatever. Like either if something's funny to me, yeah, like. And and honestly, I always kind of liked being that person because so many other people are too pussy to do it. Like, yeah, yeah. like I I went to that football game wearing a I heart Jacob Sartorius shirt, <laughs> Dude, and that's so that's many people, thing. so many people were like, "Bro, why are you wearing that?" And I was just like, "It's a fucking shirt, dog. Like, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it. That's or, it." Like, or uh, the Ethan's Peepaw. Shirt. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 the Peepaw shirt. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's just people. There are a lot of people that are just kind of closed minded or just like they're like too scared to ever like put themselves out there like that. I, I think it's people just take themselves too seriously. Definitely. But I think the I think the ultimate like badass thing you can do when it comes to like clothing and, and fashion and you know stuff like that is it, breaking the rules just yeah, unabashedly. Yeah, just, just like wear some fuck you. Yeah, just go naked. You know, go go crazy with it. not really. That's uh, my outfit. Yeah. <laughs> my birthday suit. No, uh, just wearing a bow tie. But whenever you, <laughs> whenever you wear something like kind of out there and kind of funny and goofy, or even just something out there in general that you like, it, and people, you know, they'll kind of poke at you about it. Not because yeah. they're, not because they yeah. think negative of it, but because they're just trying to like Figure feel it out. It's almost like a, like an insect with their antennas. Like they're just trying to feel out the general emotions on what you're wearing because it's something different. And if you're just totally confident about it and like, yeah, this is what I'm wearing. Ain't it funny or ain't this interesting? Like, this is interesting, right? At the very least, they'll they'll react positively to it. And I think that yeah. that's pretty it, cool because it, it's really constructive. You can wear literally anything if you own it. Exactly. And you own, own it, it so and, cool. and you say, this is me. This is what I'm wearing. You Like, <clears throat> the, a lot of people will go, damn, that's cool. And they'll fuck with you for it. Right. It's like, but, but the thing is... I like to keep the rule that it, you have to actually like it. You Absolutely, know what I mean? Yeah. You have, whether it be because you find it funny or because – or you, you think the design on it is cool. Mm -hmm. Like even if someone else would call it cheesy, dude – shit changes every other couple months yeah, or like it's true every single year things that people were calling lame a couple years ago is the new big thing now right so it's like or stuff that people haven't thought about in 15 years all of yeah, a sudden pops yeah. up again you know just I mean? wear it like so, wear it and own it yeah. and if you own shit that's how you that's how you put yourself into the like the power position of creating the, those trends the difference yeah. between being a trendsetter and a trend follower yeah and much. Uh, that's something that I always but, always kind of but the thing me. is, you can be just a trend follower and follow the trends yeah. that you like. Yeah. You can do that. that people, people like to shit on really that. important. Yeah. Because it, like people always say, oh, be a leader, but don't be a follower. Well, only if, if you a leader, want to. Exactly. Only you, if you, you need to. to be both. You need to be a follower sometimes yeah. too. Because if everybody's a leader and nobody's following anything, 
then and there are no leaders. Yeah, then there is no leaders. There's just people being independent. You know, I'm, I'm which cool. is a good it's thing. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But I think it's also equally important to support things that you like. You know, endorse stuff genuinely. Like you exactly. have to be genuine. And then also don't forget to throw your own spice into the mix. Like yeah. that's what's most important because that kind of whenever you can actually like apply that into your life, like that kind of confidence that builds up from that, you know, actually expressing like, I think that this is cool, even if it's outside the box is so valuable because you, you build up such confidence and such a, like a, it really builds your self esteem. It's, it's an incredible power, man. It really is. It's a power. Yeah. So. I, I don't know. I, it's like, I say all this, but at the same time I'll see people and it's like, I know it's genuinely what they like, but it's like, you know, if someone's wearing just like a Supreme box logo and yeah. it's like, you can kind of read into it and you're just kind of like, you bought that because it's Supreme and you just saw Supreme and you associate that with like, oh, that's cool. Right, and it's right. like that type of shit. It's like learn in, but at the same time, like there could be someone out there that like knows about style and all that, that just like, they like, Supreme. yeah, they like it and they want to wear that box logo. And it's like. That, so it's like it's kind of a conflicting thing like there's not really any rules but there is kind of rules but right. there's also not right that's why I just do my own thing and exactly. then I, I just kind of look around see it and feel it feel out what other people are doing you know and uh, yeah I, I just try to endorse do people you. doing their own thing too you know even if it seems like they're they're copying or you know even if it seems like they're just riding on something because they don't have taste of their own i think that honestly like that needs to be forgiven a little bit because Definitely. that's how people build taste well too. that's yeah. basically at least when it comes to clothing yeah that's how i am because i never like cared about like any sort of sense of like fashion or clothing or whatever right, yeah. i was like it makes me not naked Right, so, yeah, yeah, and that's a that's a way yeah. you can go about it. Yeah, you know what definitely. I mean. And the but cool thing is, it's, you can it's own only that. if you have a passion for it that <laughs> right. you should treat it this way. You right. know what I mean? Well, I think everyone should just wear what they want. Right, like, I think it's it that simple. simple. Keep that it simple. simple. Yeah, stupid, what you want. stupid simple. But and through kind of through that, like probably right after high school, I don't know what switch flipped, but I was basically like, damn, you know what I really like? Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. So that's like what I, I wear. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to like set any trends or anything. Hawaiian right. shirts. That's all. That's already a thing. You know. Well, it's but, it's not even about trying to set the trend. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I think that that would be like the misconception. I know you know what I mean, but it's not about trying to set trends. It's just that's a cool cherry on top of what happens when you are authentically yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So and express yourself in a genuine way. But which that's is cool. that's why I so. have problems like in middle school it really, really bothered me, like with like seeing kids that were like, Oh, I I am just so unique and they dye their hair and do it in this certain way <laughs> and look like a million other people that are saying the same thing. It's like bro like have a little bit of more like a wider view on all of this like yeah. you know what i mean it's Maybe. like if you feel the need for some reason to, if it's an egoic like reason you're doing it out of like to make your ego like look cooler you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like don't do that right. like it needs to just be which i mean you do everything out of your ego but it's like at the same time there is like a genuine like i like this yeah. this product this shirt so i'm gonna wear it Right, you know, but there's also stuff that I like, but that I would never wear, right? Because right. I don't think it fits me, but I like it as a piece. As you know like what I mean, yes, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. something that I had to kind of wake up to a little bit because you know you look at things and uh, I think on a like a you know a first basis you you go oh I don't like that because you think of yourself wearing it, but you can mm -hmm. look at something and go oh that's really other interesting, people you know? other people so. wearing it could look great, right? Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. yeah. There are definitely some things that I've been like, I'd love to do that. It would not look good. So right. I'll let the other people do that. Right. But you, you like it and it's cool. Yeah. It's pretty much just follow your own rules. Like yeah. pretty much. A lot, I think a lot of things are too, which yeah. is pretty cool. So yeah. I mean, when it comes to art and stuff. I'd say the only way I wish I was more fashionable, something I can't help, can't grow a beard for crap. Oh yeah. I feel like if I could grow a beard, that would be like... <laughs> I'd I'd be I'd be set. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I really hope I can grow one. Hopefully it's not just this patchy Yeah. I just shaved whatever. before I got here 
But I had a, I have a little bit of a beard going on. It's just kind of thin, kind of patchy. But whenever my beard grows in, I'm, I'm keeping my beard. If somebody I'm tells me to shave, how, I'm gonna have to see how it looks. Yeah, I'm keeping the beard. I'm keeping the beard. I may, I might switch it up from time to time. Go clean shaven or total beard. But like, I don't want. I'll, I'll just hibernate in my house, like in between the stages. <laughs> Nobody will see me with like growing in facial hair. Step be out. Funny. Step out after six months. Just yeah. with this amazing this beard. Viking beard. So yeah. braid it. Yeah. You need to do beard braids. Just uh, a big beard braid one day. I do like I do a whole bunch of beard braids and like uh, I don't know, like beard dreadlocks. Yeah, like beard locks. Dude, know? beard locks. <laughs> oh gosh. No, I've wanted a beard forever though. Beards are that's the that's just that thing that it's so nice because it's gradually progressing in your life over time and you can just like you're always updating yourself like, oh, it's growing in a little yeah, bit that's more. That's the weird thing because like, more, you, know? you know, like I'm 20. Like I'm not, I'm pretty much done with all like the actual physical growth. Like I've grown mm-hmm. like a half inch over the past like year and a half. Yeah. That's it. Like there are not many things about me that are like changing now, you yeah, know? Yeah. But like the beard like the facial hair that's that's still going like my stepdad who like is always rocking a beard now couldn't grow one for crap until he was like 28 yeah yeah, yeah no that Some does happen like that too my brother's like that my brother uh, he just started to actually fill out his his full beard and it looks good it looks good so I'm do excited. you think you could yeah. just like rub like bosley or something on your face and you would just grow a beard i don't know but like, get it surgically implanted you hair can, follicles. You can do that. Like you can show, uh, get your leg hair. It, you can get your leg hair like, uh, implanted on your face. I wouldn't do that ever. Yeah. Just, like I like the process of it and it being natural. You know, like even though it's not. Full, also, if I you enjoy wanted it, to not. like trim it ever, yeah, you kind of then you'd trimming. have to just like grow more leg hair. Yeah, and then go get another it, transplant. And I was about to say transplant more hair follicles. But like. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to ask the creators of Bosley. Just like, hey, guys. Let's call them like, up. Y'all want to call them up wanna... live on the podcast? Just like, what's up, Bosley? Hey, Mr. Bosley. Go, Mr. Bro, is, this, is this Bosley? He goes, hello, this is the CEO of Bosley. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what's up? Hey, what's, hey can you help my homie out here? It helped me, too. Yeah. Hey, dude. Uh, I hate the Dallas Cowboys so much. All right, well, I mean, that's something we can definitely... Uh, Agree on? Yeah. yeah. I hate I hate the Cowboys to a degree that like I can't explain. Far as arch okay, so like some kids are afraid of horror movie characters and I get that. That's totally understandable. I was afraid of the Cowboys beating the Redskins like every season. <laughs> Cause I was born in DC. So whenever I moved down to Texas <laughs> There's Cowboys fans everywhere because the the Texans were just becoming a team when I got here, yeah. or they were going to become a team like a couple years after or something like that. They, they were, were made in 2002. Yeah. So okay. So yeah, they were just now a team whenever yeah. I got down here. Still and just a super small fan base at the time. Exactly, and there was Dallas Cowboy fans everywhere, and the Redskins have sucked for as long as I've been alive. Like the Redskins, <laughs> yeah. they've had like two good seasons, but. Man, I hate the Cowboys. They're like the arch rival nemesis, evil supervillain of my of my childhood, of my existence. I hate yeah. the Cowboys so much. Well, I mean, also like Houston and Dallas, just the rivalry that's there. Yeah, it's really tense. I'm so glad, man. Like that that makes me so happy because I hate the Cowboys, and it's nice to be around people finally with a big enough fan base that also hates the Cowboys. Yeah. It's like it's like a like cousins, you know, like kind of brothers in arms. But yeah. not exactly. Cuz it's like the uh, the Cowboys aren't in the same division or uh, even the same conference as the Texans. Right. But since they're Dallas, everyone in Houston just says like, fuck the Cowboys. Like, right, right. Cuz it's it's just the dynamic between cities. It's like this is our team. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, well, which I've I heard, think is really cool. I've heard, like, uh, a lot of comparisons. Like, I've heard people say that, like, Houston is, like, the uh, successful older brother. Oh, okay. And then, like, Dallas and Fort Worth are just these two, like, bitchy little twins. <laughs> that, like, combined always, like, take on the brother, the yeah. older brother. 
then Austin is the other brother that just like went off to like go do his Art own school. fucking thing. No one talks to him anymore. <laughs> school. Yeah. Was Austin's kind of like a cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Austin is a Austin's a crazy I like Austin. place. Yeah, honestly, Austin is interesting. I want to go yeah. back there. I, I, what about I lived S- outside of Austin for what about a little over San Antonio. Really? Yeah. San Antonio? San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. This is our. Uh, obligatory... San Antonio is the brother that everybody likes. Okay, you well, know, I, this is our obligatory Texas talk. Yeah. <laughs> I, San Antonio yeah. is the brother that everybody likes because it's like, no, no one has a problem with San yeah. Antonio. Like, everyone, like, the fucking Alamo, you know? Like, You're right, yeah. yeah. You, you know what? Like, okay, so every every location, every notable location, at least that I'm aware of in Texas, always has, like, an identity that I associate with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, San Antonio is definitely, like, the cool, relaxed guy who's down for anything and wears, like, socks with his flip-flops or, like, socks with plant- <laughs> sandals. That's what San Antonio is. Uh, Austin is, like, you know, mega dye your hair and, like, go get drunk and go, woo! And, you know, be... Uh, be very artsy and uh, very into music and just yeah man I'm like finding myself it's like the classic <laughs> like hipster art you know artist and then Houston is just like the businessman yeah no honestly it, I see too that. many things it's it, so many yeah. things there are all so many things yeah but yeah. Houston especially but whenever I think of Houston I just think of like <laughs> like fucking crazy oh, intense really? gorillas like really just, yeah like I think intensity I in, think in what way just, really? yeah, I don't know I've like never the, heard that before really yeah, I've, I don't yeah. Yeah. I always hear I, I see the business I see the business yeah, aspect it's like, too it's the center of like business when it comes to like the entire southern United States yeah Shaw yeah. and Ron yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like you've also and then like you've got NASA yeah yeah I don't I don't know I just see it as like the NASA plays into it. It's like we're gonna go fucking space. Like yeah, and NASA. NASA's uh, where all the know? gold storing aliens are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We gotta watch out for them. They're they're the reason we have culture. We need to be thankful. So yeah, yeah. the gold eating aliens. <laughs> yeah. They gave us culture. Thank they you did. very much, gold eating alien overlords. Zenu. <laughs> yeah, I don't even I don't remember the, the name of that like theory. But yeah, no, Galveston is like. Galveston is obviously like beach hippie and funny kind enough, of crackhead. Yeah, kind of crackhead, kind of like laid back beach hippie, like crackhead. Just yeah, let's just take day by day kind of dude. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe a little bit of like uh, like uh, dirtiness, underhandedness, yeah. like kind of like a almost like a rat. You know what I mean? Like a scheme, like a dude with a dude with like a pencil mustache <laughs> who's like, all right, he, he has a scoop, like some stupid shit. I don't know. And then like, uh, what about El Paso? Oh, that's just like tumbleweeds. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> just, like I, just, I've never been to El Paso. All old people it? waiting to die Wait, in the desert. Yeah, no, I have been to El Paso. El Paso. I like, don't know if I have. I, anytime I think of El Paso, I think of just like the like the running sound <laughs> from the Flintstones. Wow. Like that's what I think of of El Paso. Um, <laughs> I've been to like because there's like five major cities in Texas, and I've been yeah. to all of them except El Paso. Yeah, I'm. Because here's the thing. The interesting thing is, so all five of Texas' big cities are like in the top 15 biggest cities in the country. Yeah. yeah. But like, it's just there's so many of them in Texas that a lot of them don't get the recognition. Like Mm -hmm. San Antonio, a lot of times it's San Antonio, Austin, and El Paso. Like El Paso is like the 14th biggest city in the country or something like that. Really? Yeah. That's surprising. I did not know that. But, like, they don't have any sports teams. They don't have any, like, there's not a they don't national. Have recognition. Yeah. The other one that's like that is fucking Phoenix. Phoenix is the fifth biggest city in the country, and I can't think of a single thing in Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona? Yeah. Oh, no, Phoenix, Phoenix Texas. <laughs> I, well, I don't know if there's like a little. Uh, yeah, know. no, like, there, there's, Texas, Paris, there's Paris, Texas, yeah. Yeah, Cleveland, there's, Texas. Uh, there's um, uh, Egypt, Texas. That's like yeah, you, that's literally just taking. Nothing, just like, don't even Google it. That's what taking like, Egypt, Texas doesn't even matter. But I'm actually curious as to like, is there anything in Phoenix? Like, I know there's like 1.5 million people, but other than that, like <laughs> they just stand maybe, there shoulder maybe. to shoulder every day, and then they sleep on the ground and then wake up like, to stand shoulder. How does it's the fifth they biggest just, city in the United United States, and I don't think it has any sort of cultural impact on mm. anything. They all chose yeah. to be low key. Everyone there is just like, yo, don't. 
Just everyone chill. Honestly, <laughs> don't don't be. Arizona, sure. Arizona's kind of crazy because it's just like turquoise gems, like cowboy hats, and like meth. Right <laughs> That's kind of what I think of Breaking Bad. Bad. That's yeah, New Mexico, like, but. Uh, oh, it's yeah. New Mexico too, but yeah. honestly, Arizona. They've always kind of mixed for me. Like, yeah, Arizona, they kind of. Yeah, it's just more. fucking desert, and then there's Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and uh, Phoenix are somewhere between all that Ooh, desert. Y'all I, know, I drove through there. Like, I've been to y'all, Albuquerque. Y'all want to know a good Texas uh, town? Quana. Quana. Yeah. I've never what is Quana? That is where my grandma was born, and it is literally. It's like. It's one of those things where it's like a road in the desert with some buildings around it. That's and incredible. then it's just more desert. Uh, and I had to go there for like a family reunion one time. Yeah. The only thing that we could do, there was like an antique vintage type shop. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, we went in there. And that's literally the only thing you can do <laughs> for like entertainment. You know what's so weird about that? I went to a town called Marlin, Texas. I've heard of Marlin. I've heard of Marlin. I passed Marlin on my way when I used to go to Tarleton. Really? I would pass at least a sign that said, this way to Marlin, Texas. Yeah, my like great-grandparents, my like great-great-great-grandparents, yeah, they made that. They made that. They made that town. Yeah, Yeah, they're the ones that founded it, which is so cool. It's on my mom's side. Can we talk Uh, about It's a ghost town. Oh, yeah, we can talk about my grandpa. My grandpa's crazy, but yeah, Marlin, Texas is now a ghost town. And there's like little shacks all around it, but there's this big ass plantation house that sits there that's like gated off, and that was like my distant there's ghosts family's. There's ghosts in that bitch. Oh, dude, there's <laughs> ghosts in that bitch. Yeah, there, there has to be. There has to be. I'm not like a, a ghost dude, but like if there's gonna be ghosts in one place, it's in that fucking plantation house. Hold but I I got to go on there and like walk up to it and like look all around, like take pictures with my mom on the porch. It's one of those houses you like drive up and has like a dirt road with like trees hanging over, and it's like this big ass white house. That was my family's house, yeah. like my distant family's house, and now it's like a, a monument for the town, and everything else around there is just like, like a, it's like a population of this like thirty, yeah, all crackheads, but <laughs> that's, just that's thirty like, crackheads running a town. Well, I mean, like the town was founded on the on the premise that there was a well that had magical healing properties when you right. drank from it. That was like the the premise on how the town got so established. That, that's what like your great great grandparents said. Yeah, no, that's like they have a, they have the well still there with like a little plaque explaining the history. There's like murals spray painted or like not even spray painted, like painted on the side of buildings and stuff. It's a cool little ghost town. Yeah, but I, I'm trying to hear about your crazy grandpa. Oh, my grandpa. Yeah, dude, I don't even know if like. Can you incriminate yourself from like generations of like, mm. <laughs> like crime? Because like my grandpa was into some crazy shit. But yeah, he owned uh, he owned Seawolf Park, which is like a little tourist uh, tourist spot in Galveston, which is like in the you know in the bay. Okay. Um, he owned that little island, uh, Seawolf Park, and used to run it back in the day. And um, he used to host uh, host all sorts of parties for millionaires from like Snap On and different mega mega corporations and super super rich dudes. Like it got, it, 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 there's some wild shit that went on out there. And uh, the cool part is, is my mom grew up out there, so she just go run on the big ass submarine and ship that's like you know beach that's that you can kind of tour and stuff and get an idea of how they used navy back you know way back when. Um, so, but there's like all sorts of cool little creepy stories because it's a pretty creepy place. Galveston is in and of itself. And yeah. You look up the 1900 storm. Oh my god. It, it's terrifying. Yeah. Like your bodies being washed up on the shore. Yeah. And my my mom grew up on an island off the coast of that island, off the coast of Texas, you know, Sea Wolf. So at night, there's these big ass birds, right? And they'll land on uh, the ships and like the, you know, the tanks and whatnot. And they'll just make a like a screeching sound that sounds like a woman dying. What the fuck? They're these what kind of birds are these? Birds. I don't know. I'd have to ask my mom to uh, to like jog my memory. But they're these giant ass like crane birds of some type. I don't know. But my mom would like go out there at night and like play hide and go seek with her friends and stuff. And there's these big ass birds and it sounded like people were dying. Kids get scared, like run off. It was pretty funny. Um, Damn. But it was also back in the day the mob actually owned. Galveston, they ruled that shit with like an iron fist from what I've been told, from what I know. Yeah. Uh, and my grandpa actually did a lot of dealings with the mob. I don't even know if like I should go into too much detail <laughs> on it, honestly. But so like, your grandpa's still alive? Oh, no, he died just like okay. a couple of years ago. But 
Um, he had all sorts of crazy stories. He like went to prison, like uh, he was on death row, and then like got off death row, what? and then got a, an award by the police for being like upstanding citizen. Like a year <laughs> later, I'm not shitting you. Like I have the plaque. I like, guess crazy, but That's lit. Yeah, they, you can get all sorts of shipments of uh, illicit things uh, on Seawolf Park when the when the shore comes in and uh, when the tide's low and the tide rises. Uh, they throw out like fishing nets and like catch. I, I don't know if it was my grandpa or if it was like people that worked under him or for him or people that worked under people that my grandpa associated with. But they throw out fishing nets and they, you know, fuck it, they just pull in like barrels of bales, bales and bales of cocaine. And like they, it was, it was wild, man. The mob really, really ran it. Uh, but that back in the day, like Galveston was a lot better off, funny enough, for it in a lot of ways. I've seen pictures of Galveston in the seventies, oh, and it's dude, like it's wild girls in uh, jean, literal jean shorts, roller yeah. skating down the seawall. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's freaking crazy. Dude. I mean, Galveston is still pretty crazy. I mean, like, you look it's at Spring down Break, down like Definitely. the pass or uh, fade the pass. Fade the pass. What, what, what's the other place called? Um, the other oh I, I know what you're talking about the um, fuck uh, Bolivar Peninsula no 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 not, not that one not it's that like one. the other place that's known for parties so it's like an S was it, was it? yeah I don't know. Saskatchewan yeah no, yeah I'm, that's it no, that's not it I, I, I'm not remembering it. it's not a big deal but yeah, yeah I've been I've been up for like almost 24 hours at this point I don't even know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Jacob hasn't slept yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't sleep before any of this so if I say some stupid shit they just dis- disagree it's all good. You know, I ain't making no excuses. Fuck that. No, I'm saying stupid <laughs> shit. I'm saying stupid shit. I love saying stupid shit. We got the Galveston. You stupid shit like four times now. Stupid yeah, shit. Stupid shit. Stupid shit. Stupid shit. But <laughs> Galveston is crazy, man. I, I love Galveston. I love the history of it. And, and the funny thing is, is people look at it now as like Crackheadville. But if you go back and you look at it, it was like the biggest, hottest shit back I, in the day. Like I think they used to legitimately years. call it... Uh, the Wall Street of the South. Yeah, no, they did. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah because it was it was the wow. biggest port. You, it's a it's a fucking beach. It's a bay. Yeah. It's a port. I mean, it's it's like everything that you could. And there was so much business that was being dri- uh, driven in that direction because that's where shit was shipped to. You know, damn. That's why that's why New York is, is such a big is such a big deal because yeah. you know it ships yeah. straight across the sea and you know. So like, Dude, they uh, what you call it? The I I watched a video and it talks about the people who like found the island of New York and like how it was just, and they called it. He was like, "This is the finest piece of land I've ever seen in my life." And it was like some pioneers way, 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 way back. The, the funny thing about that is they went up to, basically they were like, "We like this land. We're gonna buy it." And so they found like the closest Native American tribe and they were like, "Can we buy this land?" They were, and like, they were no, like, "No, we this no. Island, and They said, "We're so gonna kill you." This what land actually belongs happened to the bison. was that <laughs> it was just the wrong fucking tribe. It was just a bunch of guys that were like from a different tribe that were fucking around or something. And so they're like, "Hey, can we buy this island?" Oh, and they're like, "Yeah, sure, fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll sell the land. That's, that's not ours. Yeah, that's awesome. and so they sold that's it to them. Like, and the New Yorkers or the people who are going to build New York just walk up like big dick in it throughout the island <laughs> and all the natives are like what the fuck and they're like we bought this from you like this is ours <laughs> <laughs> this is yours this is ours yeah that's awesome and so that's how it was called New Amsterdam at first yeah because it was founded by Dutch colonists not English ones and that's then crazy. the Dutch couldn't like the Dutch were just like this isn't worth our time anymore and so they were like hey England you Take can it. have it for like Three quarters in a man. Y'all some fools, man. You know what always fascinated me? Like, uh, okay, so whenever I think of the 70s, like, I think of film grain. Because whenever I watch movies from the 70s, like, you know, I I see the film grain, right? I think the same sort of thing, and it doesn't make, this doesn't make any sense at all, but it's just the way my brain works, and it's kind of funny. That's why, like, I like to keep this going in my own brain. But when I think of those days, like, uh, you know, fucking 1700s and 1600s and stuff you know people are they had such resilience man there's like, oh yeah there's like blizzards and they're like eating pumpkin seeds and shit and just like <laughs> nutrients I mean, we will live on we, yeah that's it's, the it's wild but I, I always picture like ghosts and, and like zombies and shit like actually existed then but like I know they didn't like I, I know they didn't but I just that's what I don't that's know I associate with that time yeah, yeah. like 
Well, I mean, Aztec monsters. Their lives were probably just a lot more like crazier than ours. Like we are all very, very. I'm trying to think of the word like very stable now. Yeah, we're established. Uh, yeah, it's like it's... back in the day, like <laughs> you're all like, the... dude. I think about like women giving birth, like <laughs> just in the woods. Yeah, like, like just how like do that shit. D- yeah, no, most of them died. Like they're like, yeah, <laughs> your girl's probably gonna die. Like there's a chance she might, but like, am I having a son? Yes, he will carry on. They couldn't on. tell. They, they just I, I think it was like, out. right. I think it was Dave Chappelle that talked about it. He was like, back then, like, if you got diarrhea, you were fucked. Like, <laughs> really? That was it. Yeah, like, because you're just dehydrating yourself oh and you don't have, like, an unlimited supply of clean water. Yeah. And you don't have anything to, like, help you with that. So, like, back then it's like, oh man, like, I've got diarrhea. Nice. Wow, Goodbye. better write my will. He, <laughs> like, said, he said, I'm 12 years old. Goodbye, world. I got shit my pants disease. <laughs> yeah. But it's lit now. Like, we can just be chilling. Like, we got, we got big-ass <laughs> buildings. We got spaceships and hey, shit. You, thank you, you get guys. diarrhea, you just pop an emodium and you're good to go. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm back uh, in it. But, uh, yeah, I think we're kind of coming up on our time here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, so uh, I guess our final words. What would you like to say, Jacob? Oh shit! Oof. Uh, uh, I I really enjoyed this. Like this was this was a lot of fun. This yeah. Fun. Mm-hmm. Also, I I enjoy just spewing stupid shit and I, talking. Yeah, like I wonder how other people are gonna. People are gonna think I'm like retarded or something. So yeah, I I just think that's gonna be funny though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you probably. I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't matter. It's whatever. Yeah. I really but uh, I guess since I'm kind of on my ASMR shit, I'm wearing zipper sandals right now. So I just wanted to like... Do it. Do it, do it a little closer. That's nice. Yeah, keep that going. Yeah, That's nice. yeah we double as an <laughs> ASMR podcast. Oh, wow. Only if, you listen, only if you listen at specific times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll, uh, we need to, next one of our clips, we need to cut out all the ASMA, a- ASMR parts and just play those. Probably need a little more ASMR. You want to fill that quota? No, you got to be gentle with it. Let, let me um, see. Let me see. Yeah, it's right. got to be like. So I, I know what I'd like it to say. Like shit. <laughs> really? It's yes. probably because I've been wearing them all day. Yeah. <laughs> like Damn. Oh, stop okay. hating. Do- oh, I was gonna like pop it off, but no. it's whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna drink this water. You know, I got something to say. I am so excited to go to sleep. <laughs> like holy shit, dude! I've been up for the uh, my sleeping schedule is like so out of whack, man. Like it's, it's terrible. I like sleep until like eight in the afternoon. <laughs> like I go to sleep at like one p.m., wake up at like eight p.m., and then stay up like all throughout the night and uh, like doing, doing what I do. And then people are like, "Hey, you want to hang out?" And I'm like, "I can't." Like I had to drink an energy drink and like half a half a two liter of soda before I even came here. Now I'm like hopped up on caffeine, so that's the only reason why I'm still awake right now. Yeah. Now you just gotta go home and crash. Mm-mm. I ride a, it out, ride I've, the wave. I've hit a second wind, so now it's, <laughs> it's bad, dude. It's, it, it starts a cycle, like, and then I start getting delirious and saying just ridiculous shit. Like, I'll be up, I'll be up for like thirty four hours. <laughs> There's no reason for me to do that. Like, I ain't got. What, what am I doing? Like, I'm just dicking around. Like, I'm doing nothing, and I'm like, I've been up for thirty six hours. I'm so tired. I'm not and gonna lie. Like, right before I. Whenever I get that tired, it is very. It, I like entertain myself by just saying dumb shit. Like yeah. you're so delirious, you just everything is hilarious. Dude, like, I it's love. Pretty funny. I, I can just. I like movie. looking at memes while I'm delirious. Oh, like, dude, just yeah, the yeah, simplest yeah. meme. Like I'll just lose my shit for like thirty minutes. I love memes that just don't even. Make Bro, any I saw sense, one. Man. You know the like little fetus three D CGI dude from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, I showed yeah, it to yeah. you. It's one of those, but it's top text, bottom text, and all it says is. Outback Steakhouse <laughs> and I don't know why but that was one of the funniest memes I've seen ever. see I love that like shit that doesn't make any sense at all is funny like yeah. it's so genuinely funny now and that is like my main source of humor oh me too me too hands down like that's my favorite thing on earth is just stuff that doesn't make any sense 
And I think it's just because I like chaotic stuff. Like now, I'm just yeah, like, you've okay, you've shown slow. me the appeal of chaos. Dude, like just, just so for awesome. no reason, just like at random points in life, just like ha ha, like, ha, ha just ha, craziness. Ha. Burn, 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 fire, fire. That shit's so funny, man. I love it. All right, so uh, I guess. We wrap this it up. Is the end. Yeah, no. Um, I'd like to be back on eventually at some point. Yeah, no. definitely. We plan on sure. like just whoever's free, whoever wants to more, come. Yeah, more guests in the future. I mean, not every episode will have a guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of miss sitting in the comfier chairs because we have to sit in like these like <laughs> bored party chairs. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I could have just sat. Yeah, my ass kind of hurting. Yeah, yeah, mine is too. Like bit. y'all could have been reclining. Like I sit in this. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that would have. Yeah, it would have thrown off the dynamic a little setup bit. a little bit. Yeah, it's probably. all good though. It's all good. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, episode four is all right. Well, in the bag, complete. Thank you, thank you all for uh, for watching. I guess.